Welcome to Good Day Dixie. I'm your host, Erin Allred, and I roped one of my really good friends, Devin Dixon, into co-hosting with me today. Um, normally, I've got a brand new co-host. His name is DJ Lex. I've had him on before. But today, I, I think I called and cried to you on the phone. Please, please, please come help me co-host, because I needed someone besides just me. Sometimes I get tired of talking to myself. <laughs> but thank you so much, Devin, for coming on the show. Devin has his own show, and you're on the radio. Yeah, Sports Radio 1210, and it's good to be here. Thanks for having me again. It's always well, thank fun. You. You're one of the few people who I think can talk more than me. Because your show is, what, two hours? Yep, yep, two hours a day. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm really glad that he's on the show. But we're going to get started right in. He's going to help me out with the Dixie Dozen. Today it's going to be the Dixie Half Dozen because we have a bunch of people to get through today, and I want to make sure we have enough time. So we're only going to have six things. Now, the Dixie Dozen are the six or 12 um, things that you need to know about Southern Utah. So number one, and this isn't really about Southern Utah necessarily, and Devin was laughing at me when he saw this one. I, but couldn't, I, thought, <laughs> I couldn't believe this was number one, but I like it, I do. <laughs> I thought this was really cool, and when I explain it to you, you're gonna like it even more, because what it is, it's a website called Yumly, and it's spelled Y-U-M-M-L-Y. Now, before you're like, okay, that's weird, what it is, is you can go on this website, it's just www.yumly.com, and it takes all of the guesswork out of your meals, like fixing meals. All you do is go on there, you type in uh, the ingredients you would want in your meal, you can type in... You mean it doesn't tell you what ingredients to put in? No, you tell them what you want to eat. But like, for example, if you love... Uh, you could even pick something really random and weird, like uh, watermelon and peanut butter, right? So you could type in watermelon and peanut butter. Do you like watermelon and peanut butter? Well, they may not give it to you together. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> but they will come up with a meal that incorporates those things gotcha. into it. Okay. So if you say chicken pot pie, it'll tell you put peas and carrots and yeah. this and this, and it shows you how to make it. Yeah, it tells you exactly what to do, what you need. The other thing you can do, instead of putting in ingredients, is you can type in if you want like something salty or sweet, or salty and sweet, or whatever. Type it in there, push the button, and it generates like an entire meal for you. So now, maybe your wife would be more interested. <laughs> no, I like to cook, I like to cook, but my, my idea of cooking is put some meat on the grill, maybe you know, put some crab in a steamer. I don't know how to yeah. make extravagant things. Well, then this would make it really easy for you. <laughs> well, maybe I'll try it out. So yummily. Yummly. How do you spell that? Y-U-M-M-L-Y. Okay, that's easy. So check it out. Trust me, it makes it really easy to cook and you don't even have to think about it. You just think of what you're, you know, sometimes, aren't you ever sitting around and you're like, you know what, I really want something salty. Yeah, peanuts. Maybe that's just me. Sunflower seeds. <laughs> okay, number two. <laughs> number two on the Dixie Half Dozen today. And this is something I think people in St. George don't think enough about. We're so close to Las Vegas. Right. It really, like, you can get there in an hour and a half. Yeah, when you're out of town, where do you live? St. George, never heard of it. Oh, it's just close to Vegas, then they know. Yeah, it's yeah. really, really close. And there's so many fun things going on in Vegas. And I think a lot of times people, especially people with kids and families, they worry because they think, oh, Vegas. Casinos. Yeah. yeah. But there's a whole bunch of really fun, exciting things to do in Vegas that are more family friendly. And the one that I found for number two, it's called First Friday. And what it is, it's they close off an entire section of Las Vegas Boulevard down by the Las Vegas Arts District. I don't know exactly where the that is. Older part of town, yeah. Yeah. And um, it's totally free, and they have all sorts of different artists, musicians. Uh, St. George has a similar thing. Absolutely, yeah. It's the first Friday of every month, and it's just becoming this big, huge thing. In fact, the mayor, Oscar Goodman, he called First Friday the best thing that has ever happened to Las Vegas. Nothing bad has ever happened to Vegas, according to Oscar Goodman, though. <laughs> That's definitely true. But um, it's, it's free, and it's family-friendly, and it's only an hour and a half away. True. And I'm wondering, I know you travel a lot with your work and just for fun as well. Mm -hmm. What do you do when you go to Vegas? Uh, usually a show. Usually it's like you know, love with the Beatles tribute uh, or a comedy act or sometimes we'll go catch a, a concert. I went, who did I see the last time I was down there? Pepper, uh, you probably never heard of them. Before that, it was REO Speedwagon and somebody. Yeah. So you go to shows and concerts because, you know, it's just close, like you say, an hour and a half away. Yeah, so don't forget about Las Vegas. There's tons of really fun things to do here in St. George as well, which we talk about on a regular basis. But if you're looking for something a little different, it's only, you know, it's right down 
right down the I-15, right? <laughs> okay, number three, and this was something that I thought was interesting just because the economy is kind of slow right now, and I think people that live in St. George's just think, oh my gosh, we're, having, we're struggling, people are struggling to find jobs a little bit and, and things like this, but um, actually Forbes magazine just came out with an article and they said that St. George is one of the best small places for businesses and careers in the United States. Yeah, I, I believe that. Yeah, we came in number 22. It doesn't, it doesn't seem as good as it once was for people to have been here in the community for a while, but it's still a great place to be. Yeah, well, it, it's a great place for small businesses. And the interesting thing is we, are, we were right in between um, Lawrence, Kansas was right ahead of us at 21. Never been there. N me neither. <laughs> and Santa Fe, New Mexico was right after us hmm. at number 23. But I thought that was really interesting. So if you think... Do you know who number one was? Yes. I looked that up because I thought you would ask me. <laughs> number one was Des Moines, Iowa. Really? Yeah. Am I saying that right? Des Moines? Des Moines, Des Moines. Des Moines. <laughs> the S is probably said silent more than not. <laughs> really? That surprises me. Yeah. It's number one. It hmm. didn't say why. Um, but the median household income here in St. George is $53,000. Okay. So that's not too shabby, especially because the cost of living isn't too extreme here either, right? Well, it's come down a lot, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're here to help me pronounce Des Moines. <laughs> Des Moines. I don't know if we still got <laughs> it right. I'm going to get emails. People from that city are going to just write in and tell me that I pronounced it wrong, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Number four. Um, this is one of my favorite things, and this is another thing that Devin makes fun of me a little bit about. I've never made fun of you. What are you thinking of? Facebook. Oh, yes, I do make yes. fun of you. <laughs> you are always on Facebook. I know. I know, that's true. And I don't think we told everyone, Devin and I grew up together, kind of, in a small town in Washington. Mm -hmm. So we go way back. Our right. families go way back. I'm mm -hmm. friends with his little sister. And um, so he gives me a hard time about stuff sometimes. But I am on Facebook kind of a lot. I love it. But one of the cool things that I found on Facebook, and I know lots of you out there on Facebook all the time too, so don't even try and judge me. But um, there is a group on Facebook, and it says, it's called, you know you're from southern Utah when, dot, right. dot, dot. Right. Okay, I see where this is going. Yeah. And I spent like an entire day the other day just reading through all of these things and laughing. And even though I'm not originally from St. George, I'm originally from a small town. Well, that's what's surprising. I read a couple of the, the, the and you can give and throw a couple mm -hmm. to the folks watching the show out, but it seems like kind of where we're from, they yeah. fit even more. Like you're stuck behind a tractor five deep and you think it's a traffic jam. Yeah. That's, that, that, I think LA or something has a lot of traction chance, but you don't see tractors on the freeway. So that's kind no. of a funny little pun making fun of a small town. But it's a good thing to be in yeah. a small town. It is. And they're really funny things. Most of them are, are really good natured. But the, the site itself, I contacted the girl who put it together and just asked her, you know, why she did it. And she sent me kind of a, an explanation of why she started this group. She said there's groups like this all over the place. Um, but she decided to do this because she's originally from St. George, but she feels like she's not really part of like the Utah culture necessarily, and so she wanted to kind of put this out there for people um, to show them, to kind of give them a chance to laugh at themselves, you know, the funny things that happen here. Sometimes we take ourselves too seriously. And then also, there's a ton of people that come together on this site and connect and write their own opinions about what some of the things on the list should be. So let me tell you some of the things that were put up on this list. And I know which one my favorite is. I, my favorite, let me tell you, yeah. is the one where you know you're from Utah when the deer hunt is bigger than the 4th of July. I like that yeah. one. Because deer hunt here is really big. Yeah, no it is. And it's, it's big in Royal City too. Oh, absolutely. Do? Yeah. Yeah, so, but you can just go out your back porch and shoot some coyotes or some pheasants yeah. <laughs> any day of the week, any time Isn't of year. Isn't school out for the deer hunt? Yeah, they there? actually have a shortened week here, and yeah. it's usually during football season. <laughs> they usually move the football games from Friday night to like Wednesday night mm -hmm. so people can get out to the deer hunt. Yeah, well, and that's one of them on the list. But number one on the list of you know you're from Southern Utah when was um, you have ever heard food used as a swear word. Have you ever heard food used as a swear word? Oh, eggs. Oh, waffles. I don't know. That doesn't, I have never used that. I hadn't heard oh, that one pizza. either. Oh, yeah. pizza. doesn't, I don't know about that one. That's I, number one, really? That's number one, and I haven't heard it either, but in Utah, I've heard <laughs> lots of other things replace swear words as well. Hmm. Not, not necessarily food, but other things. But I had to tell that one because it's number one.